Welcome back to the Peggy Smedley Show, the podcasting voice of IoT and digital transformation. Hello, everyone. We are coming to you live from CES 2020. This is the Peggy Smedley Show, and I am here with Jerome Leroy. He's the Vice President of Sales from Wiz Connected. Welcome. I see that Hello. you are running through the hall. I Met appreciate it. that. Yeah. The buses are challenging, right? That's exactly. what happens. Exactly. I know. Absolutely. I can appreciate that. Well, now I take a deep breath here, and yeah. I know that you said that you have an app that you yep. want to show yep. here. So, sure. Um, We'll uh, make sure that our guys can uh, point that to you if you want to do sure. that. So as one of the co-founders, we yes. appreciate you uh, telling us a little bit about that. Um, you want to show us off what you have here? You want to show that, demonstrate L that? Let's, later on, we can, we yeah. can do so, yeah. Why don't so. you do that and he'll zoom in on that. Yeah, I don't know if it's walking. Yeah, he's got Fine. it right here okay. if you want to show a little bit. So yeah, we have, we have been basically uh, speaking, developing the platform. So the platform is a mix between uh, uh, UI, UX, user interface on the app, um, cloud-based system, uh, cloud-centric, able to manage million devices uh, online, and uh, firmware. So the app itself has been uh, designed uh, to appeal um, most of end users for smart home, but as well as well on, on commercial environments. So our target audience has been to say, okay, a grandmother and a granddaughter can use it and understand very clearly what's happening at home when it's coming to light or electrical devices. So this is, for instance, the, the show in the booth. We can see which light are on, which light are off, what status is happening to them, if they are in color, in warm white or cool white. Um, we have been as well uh, implementing some very nice options which are about dynamic lighting mode, where you can have, for instance, fireplace or ocean, uh, creating some uh, light effects um, overall. And then what we get as well has been introducing human-centric lighting, uh, which is basically speaking, uh, the ability to turn from bright white to warmer white according to the natural pattern for sleep and wake-up mode, which is a very, very popular option among users because uh, it's really sorting out the question of which kind of light you need at what time of the day. Um, and then we have some uh, scenes management able to create whatever scene you want and then you can call them back with Siri shortcuts on an iPhone, by the voice, or Google and, and Alexa as well. And we just introduced to the show um, some new settings uh, features uh, that are related to uh, power consumption management, so you can start monitoring electricity uh, consumption within an household by hour, by day, by week, and including monitoring by room, so to help optimize electricity. So basically electricity. we can tell when people have left their lights on. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So the interface is pretty easy to use, pretty straightforward, but quite complete when it comes to lighting experience. Just uh, You can to tell when the kids are leaving the lights on all the time, right? Absolutely. But now you, you know. just developed a relationship, or do you have it with... Uh, Signify and Philips or something yes. like that? Yes, so exactly, you, you get it, Peggy. We, we've been uh, a startup company with some uh, free French co-founders in Hong Kong, uh, working from, uh, let's say, um, on, the, on the projects in 2016. And in June 2019, so uh, a bit more than six months ago, uh, the company has been uh, acquired and integrated within the Signify, so formerly known as Philips Lighting Organization. So. Of course, Signify Philips Lighting is very well known for Philips Hue, which is the leading uh, uh, system on the market today. But it was making sense to introduce for, for Signify an alternative which was Wi-Fi driven, so we rely on Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi plus Bluetooth, and as well an ecosystem which is open to other lighting vendors. Yeah? So that's the very specific, uh, let's say Android-like story we have when it's coming to the Wiz ecosystem. So the main features that you just described are, you know, kind of changing like the warm, the, the kind of light features that you have there, um, kind of looking at some of the usage aspects of it that you have when you have that. Are there other features that you have that you that are going along with it that you didn't show that you want yep. to tell us about? Yeah, we are pretty much, um, let's say, family or space oriented, meaning multiple users can have their own settings. Uh, you can uh, swap literally from your home to your office to another place, uh, for instance, from brothers and sisters' uh, place. Um, and on top of that, uh, we have very advanced scheduling features uh, that can create routines. Uh, and on top of that, we've been developing uh, remote control 
uh, when you don't want to use your smartphone. So we have been introducing the first low energy consumption Wi-Fi remote control, two years battery, but you still control it in Wi-Fi, which is a, a premiere. Usually it was purely for Bluetooth or Zigbee technology. Uh, motion sensor are getting introduced at the CS, where you can do not only motion detection, but as well daylight harvesting, meaning uh, winter time, you can have the light automatically set up, set up uh, on, on the, in the afternoon, uh, whenever the, the, the weather is, is, is dark or gray, and you don't have to think about it, it's about comfort. So the very big focus of Wiz is about well-being, and we continue that direction. So these are all part of the app, or in, that are in part of the app, or these are or other products that you have here at CES? All part of the app, okay. uh, and then any light uh, from Wiz brand, Philips, brand, uh, from Philips Wi-Fi brand in some countries, or even on Depot today, uh, or other players that can provide decorative fixtures indoor, outdoor, and we have some in Costco, for instance, today as well as on, on Depot, can use the app and everybody's interoperable. Exactly like Windows with different PC brands. Now you also announced some new products here at CES as well, is yeah. that correct? Yeah. What did you announce here? The motion sensor um, and the remote control. Okay. which gives some other trigger than the app on the routine or the voice control. So we want to give the users a choice, whichever room they use, whichever moment of the day or night, uh, they can uh, activate the light very simply. And what are we talking about cost right now when, when users have this? Because you've like got a whole, well, maybe we should step back a second and yep. talk about the smart portfolio of products now. Because yes. that gives you a, kind of a, a uh, like several different products now, I think, true. in that portfolio, right? True, true. We have retrofit bulbs, uh, the very traditional A-shaped bulbs, uh, uh, BF30, that's pretty useful in many uh, areas, like especially kitchen, bathroom, corridors. Uh, we have filaments with a very traditional Edison shape, ST19, uh, with very nice rendering and, and beautiful, um, uh, let's say, look, vintage feeling, which is pretty... Uh, interesting when you put it connected, uh, LED strips as well. Uh, so all those portfolio of products work well together and you can create scenes between uh, warm white, cool white colors and record those scenes and play them in your different uh, environment. And then looking at now with the app and the products, costs, are these very comparable to a lot of the other solutions? Where, where, do you, where does this solution fit? So the compatibility with other solutions is first of all in the Wiz ecosystem with other vendors on the market that Wizify, as we say, put the chips of Wiz inside their products. And then when it's come to the broader IoT markets, we have some cloud-to-cloud -cloud integration with Alexa uh, environment, uh, Google ecosystem and Google Assistant ecosystem keeps growing. We have very strong partnership with them. Um, Siri shortcuts that can be activated in parallel with different systems as well. And as well, Samsung SmartThings, um, where you can have interoperability, for instance, with some uh, Samsung sensors to activate the light. Uh, as, as it just to do today. Where's the drive right now for smart lighting market? Is Are we still really, is it a big push in the smart lighting market or is it slowed a little bit? Because there was this big push and, and what, what's the market kind of been like? In our case, we are a bit of a younger company. So the growth level we have is, 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 is extremely substantial. Huh? We are moving millions of units to the market, mainly to US and Canada, but as well um, strong countries like Germany, Australia, and we have some introduction in Asia. Um, overall, um, you can see things from different points of view. There has been a first wave with more technology-oriented uh, consumer that were very keen to, to let's say, build up uh, their smart systems. But now, one of the ambition of the Wiz ecosystem is to move mainstream with very affordable price points. Uh, we are talking of products that can be in the eight to fourteen, fifteen dollars per products without any hub. You can uh, literally buy them and, and starting playing, and it's like a Lego system. You can stack up the lights. So what we want to do is, if we take USA, uh, average household get 45 light points. Uh, so the idea is to be able to say, oh, if you want to have connected lights and with a Wii system, you can start easily to extend in different rooms, not necessarily the living room, but bedrooms, corridors, kitchen, bathroom, even outdoor, and without, uh, I mean, uh, burning too much of the of the credit card right right yeah. right so you're not spending too much money right exactly. I got you I got yeah. you how how has it been when you're looking at trying to connect it with products with other hubs and things like that is that easy to do I mean is that what you're trying to do with some of your products now or hope to do you mean uh, without hub yeah. yeah yeah the idea is to have what we call a ready to pair mode so as soon as you've been uh, let's say plugging uh, the light bulb for instance or a fixture automatically the, 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 the device will look after the network 
and uh, will self pair itself. After that, uh, we have two technologies nowadays, Wi-Fi and Wi-Fi plus Bluetooth. Uh, so on Wi-Fi plus Bluetooth, we can have two pairing options by Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, but the end user doesn't see it. It's automatically handled uh, by the systems. Looking at what you've been seeing here on the show floor, what's your take on what's uh, going on here with this smart connected home market right now and trends and trying to make that all work? I think we will go with three stages. Such stage one has been the connectivity. People are moving for smart wireless devices, very Bluetooth needed a gateway, but not so connected to the internet to products that definitely are connected 24 by seven to the internet of things because of voice control, but not only because of interoperability. So that's been where the industry has been driving uh, things forward in the last two years. Uh, and now people understand that the difference between wireless and connected and America especially is about connected. Uh, next trend is about sensors. Next trend is about the IoT that's gonna start feeling what's around. Is there any occupation? If there is occupation, what are the preferences between the different, um, uh, let's say, people in the house? Uh, for instance, some people might prefer warm white or cool white. So you're gonna get some preferences related to users. So that's something we're working now with geofencing options uh, that move forward, which is a stage two. Stage three uh, will be more about machine learning optimization. For instance, um, in a kitchen, uh, if there is no occupancy detected and the light is always on, uh, the system, and that's not 2020, but that's what we work on for 2021, will let you know, hey, what about having a routine where if there is nobody in the kitchen after 20 minutes, the light will be turned off, but it will be done by the system for the users. So stage one, connectivity. Stage two, sensor detection of human presence. Stage three, machine learning and routines on automation. So are we, how far away are from we having that stage three that you just described? 2021, 2022, we will start to see, uh, let's say, more intelligence in the system. This is at least what we are working on uh, on, on, on the WIS side. And I know that Philips Hue is, is, is working in the same direction. And adoption, consumer adoption, as you see that, will they embrace that as the interoperability as we get more and more of those things? More and more. Uh, we've been lucky to be selected by Home Depot as their uh, core systems together with Philips Hue. So now uh, the deployment has been in 2200 stores. Mm -hmm. We can really see uh, volumes catching up. Uh, compared to non-connected lights and compared to what it used to two years ago. So really talking about millions of old that are getting deployed now in US market, which is definitely a big difference in volumes compared to the trend, uh, let's say, uh, 18 months ago. Where is your booth here? Where have you been located? We are in the smart on area uh, at Sense. And what have you seen of the solutions that are over there? What's impressed you from a technology standpoint? Um, a lot of things we're getting to sleep. I think that there is uh, now a lot of options about uh, having a better well-being. So that's something we work on the circadian, but you can see that it's associated with a lot of products uh, related to the arm, whether it's about the bathroom, it's about the, the, the bedroom, the beds themselves and so on. I think that people start to consider that a better sleep, a better light environment, but not only that, uh, will make them a better life and a, a longer life as well. As we look to 21, 22, 23 and the years ahead, what will be the biggest changes that you see in technology and in the IoT? I think that a lot of people start talking about the chip initiative, the common uh, ARM interface protocol uh, with in between Apple, Google, Amazon, and member of the Zigbee Alliance, including Cinefy, Philips Lighting, or uh, players like Schneider Electric or Legrand. And uh, now we're working together as a committee uh, with those companies and within those companies group to define standard for interoperability with some basic control level and uh, basic pairing level that's gonna make things easier and smoother for the end users to interoperate those products. And it, it will come in the next two years. Huh? If we don't see enough interoperability, do you see that there will be a shakeout in the smart home? Because there's a lot of connected products out there. It's probably more than the average consumer can can comprehend or actually use. So just like you know we talked about before, there's always mm. there's a lot of products out here, but yeah. will there eventually be that True. shakeout that we True. are looking at? Shakeout will come from different directions. Interoperability is one of them. Uh, security is another one of them. There are a lot of products on the market with very poor security level, no encryption of the Wi-Fi password and so on, and people start to buy, let's say, non-brand products and so on, very affordable, but that's extremely embarrassing, including whatever geopolitical tension you can get between China and US, and I, I let people consider that. Uh, and on top of that, uh, you, you start to see 
uh, in the checkout, people that really want to stack up those connected objects together and not having to do and redo and redo again. The mainstream population wants something consistent. So we are, will be coming to uh, either the cheap initiative can work out and then end user will start to feel comfortable. If not, everybody will stay in a loop where you still you get 10 or 20% of the population got it connected, but the rest will, will drop off. I agree with you. Looking at it like that, when you look at that, that checkout that occurs and we look at a bigger population, what do you think will be the, who will be the beneficiary of all of this? Will it ultimately be the end user who gets a select few or will be will lose some of the better technologies? End users definitely going to be the winners because the, um, there is a, a real serious battle about uh, cost price reduction, affordability, accessibility and more features more and more features for the given items. So i uh, give you a very good example in lighting. Uh, a lot of households in America get a dimmer switch, but uh, whenever you want to, to change a uh, variation of lights, whether you watch TV or read your uh, uh, iPad and so on, or your Kindle, you need to stand up from your sofa, from your bed, go there, move again, and it's pretty expensive anyway device to install at home, especially with larger mobility. People don't necessarily want to invest in hardware dimmer. Uh, managing that by software is uh, making it uh, more affordable and more convenient at the end of the day with better eye comfort. So end users are definitely uh, the big winners in, in, in this uh, category. When it's come to industry players, um, I think that those that can really come with something consistent, what I'm talking is future-proof technology that's going to be compatible for the next five, ten years, will be the one bringing the value to the end consumer that at the end of the day will understand they don't want to buy a gadget, mm -hmm. but they want to get something which is very consistent for consistent. them. Consistent. So looking forward, where, what do you, got any predictions? Um, yeah, I think that we can say that in, uh, if we take the, the for instance, uh, uh, lighting world where you have 26 billion uh, non-connected lights worldwide and only 100 million of them connected, you can absolutely start seeing that within three years time, uh, one light out of three, at least, will be a connected one. So, which will drive uh, a lot of adoption from end users uh, there. So, we can definitely see a big, big growth in this segment, again, because of the number of uh, products related to that. Well, I have to tell you, Jeremy Leroy, thank you so much. You're the Vice President of Sales and Marketing for Wiz Connected. Thank you so much. You're what is welcome. your URL so our listeners and uh, our viewers Wiz, can go up. WizConnected.com is a website. All yes. right, thank you so much. All right, You're viewers, very Thanks, that is all the time that we have for today. And we it's all the time we are here at CES 2020. That's it. It's, as they say, it's a wrap. So uh, make sure we are going to post these and they will be up next week. But thank you for watching all the time that we had. And you can watch our regular show every Tuesday at, at 12 Central. So this is the Peggy Smedley Show, the podcasting voice of IoT and digital transformation. Make sure to tweet at me at ConnectedWMag. And remember, with great technology comes great responsibility. Have an awesome week.